official ownership webinar. Oui. Um, I'll... But... Let me just... Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar on the CIPC beneficial ownership. I am Alma Pinkham from the Corporate Education Unit, and I will be our facilitator today. As per our invite, CRPC has been mandated in terms of a General Laws Amendments Act, the Companies Act, and its regulations to establish a register of beneficial owners for all entity types registered in terms of a Companies Act and the Close Corporations Act as amended. The new register is linked to developments that were announced by the Financial Action Task Force through our National Treasury in terms of an action plan that South Africa needs to implement in order to mitigate the risk of continuing being under increased monitoring or grade listing. Today's webinar will provide information on how our system operates and offer guidance on completing a filing. The webinar will cover the BO register and clarify the specific requirements we have for all filers. A demonstration of a BO functionality will follow the presentation. Our present, presenter today is Ms. Lucinda Steenkamp. She's a senior legal advisor in the corporate legal unit. After the demo, we will have a question and answer session. We will respond to questions related to today's topic, which are posted under comments. For questions that are not related to the topic, please log an inquiry on the CIPC website inquiry system. Also in the studio with us today is Mr. Benjamin Sabotza, an investigator in the Corporate Disclosure and Compliance Regulation Unit, and he will also assist in answering some of your questions in writing, as well as if necessary with Lucinda, when she also answers questions. Please remember the recording will remain on Facebook and YouTube, should you wish to view it again at a later stage. With that, I hand over to Lucinda. Thanks very much, Alma. Good morning, everybody. Just checking if I'm audible. Yes, you are. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good morning once again. Uh, for joining us on, on this webinar. Um, last week, or the 13th of July, we had a webinar that was specifically related to the um, legislative requirements, etc., for beneficial ownership. Today, I'm going to look a bit more at the definitions of a beneficial owner, what is an affected company, etc., based on the queries and questions that we've received in the interim on this subject. Um, let's go. First of all, uh, the role of the CIPC, just to get everybody on the same page, the CIPC is the regulator in terms of the Companies Act, as amended, read with the applicable regulations, and as the regulator, the CIPC has, amongst others, a responsibility to educate on and promote voluntary compliance, to monitor compliance with the Act, investigate non-compliance or contravention of the Companies Act and other legislation as mentioned in the Companies Act, as well as enforce compliance. The General Laws Amendment Act 22 of 2022 was written into law in December of last year, and it amended the Companies Act to mandate the CIPC to establish a beneficial ownership register and to collect information regarding corporate vehicles, <clears throat> excuse me, beneficial ownership status. Companies Act Regulations Amendment was promulgated on the 24th of May. The Government Gazette notice is there for you, which provides legal backing to the requirements of the General Laws Amendment Act and the subsequent Companies Act Amendment. On the 24th of February, South Africa was put on the Air Financial Action Task Force Grey List, which means that South Africa as a country is placed under increased monitoring while the country has committed to resolve identified strategic deficiencies. Establishment of the BIA Register addresses one of the Financial Action Task Force identified deficiencies for the country. 
The CIPC had to respond to the following after an action plan was issued to ensure that competent authorities have timely access to accurate and up-to-date beneficial ownership information on legal persons and arrangements and to apply sanctions for breaches of violations by these legal persons to their BO obligations. The CIPC released the Beneficial Ownership Register functionality on its e-services platform on the 1st of April 2023, and to date we have received 1,155 total BO applications. 492 of those have been completed successfully. The main purpose of the Beneficial Ownership Transparency is to assist law enforcement in the fight against money laundering and financing of terror activities. The functionality provides for corporate vehicles, companies and closed corporations to submit with the CIPC details regarding its beneficial ownership status, 5% and above in terms of mentioned corporate vehicles. Failure to submit the required information is tantamount to non-compliance of the Companies Act, which could result in court-ordered administrative fines and other sanctions. Beneficial ownership information is required to be filed by the General Laws Amendment Act. The Act amended the Companies Act in relation to beneficial ownership specifically and gave the Commission a mandate to request companies to file and update beneficial ownership information as and when applicable. Now, what is beneficial ownership? A beneficial owner in respect of a company means an individual, a person, who directly or indirectly ultimately owns that company or exercises effective control of that company, which can be done through the holding of beneficial interests in securities of the company, the exercise of or control over the exercise of voting rights, the right or control of the right to appoint and remove directors, the ability to exercise control through a chain of ownership of a heuristic person other than a holding company of that company, a body of persons, corporate or unincorporate, example, the body corporate of an estate, which is usually registered as an NPC, a person acting on behalf of a partnership, a person acting in pursuance of a trust or an agreement, example, as trustees, the beneficiaries of trusts, beneficiaries of an agreement, etc., uh, the ability to otherwise materially influence the management of the company. This is very wide. Um, so it is the responsibility of each company to go and have a look which persons have um, significant control over the uh, management of the company and um, or owns 5% or more in terms of uh, interest in securities, etc. That was mentioned in the earlier slide. Apologies. Uh, State-owned companies will also be required to file beneficial ownership information unless exempted by the Minister in terms of Section 9.2 of the Companies Act. Okay, what is an affected company? An affected company means a regulated company as set out in Section 117.1 Roman 1, which in turn refers to a company to which this part, the, that part of the Act, Part C, which talks to regulation of affected transactions and offers and the takeover regulations apply as determined in accordance with section 118, 1 and 2. An affected company therefore includes a public company, both listed and unlisted, a state-owned company except where they were exempted by the minister, a private company in terms of the transfer of securities when exceeding the percentage prescribed by the minister, which is currently 10%, within a 24-month period, and a private company that is controlled by an affected company or a regulated company, or is a subsidiary of an affected company. All of these are regarded as affected companies. The difference between a legal and a beneficial owner, some examples, um, shareholding, a registered owner of shares directly with a company, the information is known and clearly indicated on the company's records in the securities register. This is a legal owner. A beneficial owner is a person, a warm body, that holds shares indirectly, for example, through a bank, broker, etc. So your bank or the broker will be indicated on the securities register as the shareholder, 
but the beneficial owner is the actual owner of the uh, shareholding in that company. In terms of property, uh, the legal owner of a property would be the person whose name is indicated on the title deed of the property. This is known registered information, whereas the beneficial owner of property would be the person who benefits from that property, which can also be the registered owner. Um, if there's no beneficial owners, then that, that's fine. That uh, complex structures just need to be looked at and broken down. In terms of trusts, trustees act as legal owners of the assets held in trust. When a trust owns property, for example, and also makes all the management decisions, whilst the beneficiaries, in fact, benefit from the trust assets. Uh, talking about a property, rental income, living on the property, rent-free, etc., et that's beneficial, a beneficial owner. Voting rights. A person may not necessarily be indicated as a shareholder of a company, not in the securities register indicated, but has specific voting rights related to an asset the company holds. That's an example. That's not a shareholder, but a beneficial owner through its significant control in terms of the company and possible benefit in the property. Significant control, a person may also not be indicated as legal or a beneficial owner, shareholding, voting rights, etc., but holds the ability to appoint or remove directors of a company in terms of Section 664 of the Companies Act. This ability to materially influence the board of directors structure of any company is regarded as significant control and thus beneficial owner. Beneficial ownership register. The submission of the beneficial ownership information is done through a fully automated functionality, as mentioned, to be updated as and when the information changes, but not less than once annually. Entities incorporated before the 24th of May, that was the promulgation of the regulations, must file the required information within 30 days from its incorporation anniversary date, the financial year end usually, Entities incorporated after the 24th of May must file their BO information within 10 days of incorporation as applicable. The register functionality can be found on the e-services platform and any person can file the BO information on behalf of a legal person, provided that a written mandate is in place for such filing. This mandate forms part of the compulsory supporting documents that must be filed. The disclosure of this register is anticipated to be an online automated process in line with the existing disclosure process with the caveat that requesters of this information will be vetted and verified as law enforcement agencies and regulatory bodies or accredited authorities. The beneficial ownership register will not be available to the public. The aim of the BO register is to have a repository or a register of natural persons who own or exercise control over legal entities and to assist law enforcement, this is both nationally and internationally, with relevant information when it comes to the investigation of the ultimate owners of entities. This uh, slide just gives you an indication on the e-services platform where you will find the beneficial ownership register. Just as a summary, uh, the establishment of the beneficial ownership register and the collection of credible, up-to-date and accurate information remains a CIPC priority together with the establishment of a functional portal for the disclosure of this information. It will be a fully virtual functionality, both the register and the disclosure. Requests for and delivery of information will be done electronically and through automated systems. Verification capability of submitted information. Um, we're looking at triangulation with other regulators and authorized bodies credit to have a credible and accurate register of information. Cross-border information sharing with law enforcement agencies and other uh, registration houses. Uh, MOUs are in the process of being put in place in order to share this type of information and triangulate what is received through the different um, jurisdictions and share that information with law enforcement as and when required. 
Investigation powers, summoning powers and compliance notices is some of the powers of the CIPC in terms of the Companies Act non-compliance and or uh, contravention of the Companies Act, which uh, applies legislative sanctions to companies that do not comply with the beneficial ownership filing requirements. Disclosure of information, as mentioned, is done in, li in line with the Protection of Personal Information Act and only law enforcement agencies and regulatory bodies or authorities will have access to this information. The last slide here gives you an indication of where you can find different guidelines on the beneficial ownership legislative requirements, guidance notices published, frequently asked questions, which is updated um, continuously, as well as a user guide on, on the system itself. Uh, thank you, everybody. That is just a short and sweet the uh, presentation from my side. I'm going to share with you, I just ask for a few seconds, I'm going to share with you the um, demo of the beneficial ownership register, uh, explaining what to file, how it works. I will talk to some enhancements that has been done to the system after this uh, demo has been done so that you are completely up to date on what is required currently in terms of this register. Breakfast seminar. Um, at this point, we're going to show you a quick demo of the beneficial ownership application process using our e-services website. As you'd be quite aware, this is the landing page after you've logged on using your customer code and password, where it will obviously list the list of entities that are linked to your ID number, where you'd be going in the top right corner where it says transact, and that's where it will open up a bouquet of services that are available. The CIPC e-services site, scroll down to the bottom to beneficial ownership and that's where you would click. Now, you must just keep in mind that the application process, it's still at its first phase of development, uh, and the application process on the customer side, as far as speed, will be quite better than what we're seeing in this specific demo. Uh, the first step is... Lucinda, I think the sound has disappeared. So just click new for That's a new that. application, mm -hmm. of which, once again, it will list a com uh, list of companies that are currently available using the ID number linked to the customer code. Or you can also use the enterprise search option that's at the bottom of the page, providing just the registration number of the company in question. Just click search function. which once it has loaded to the following page, it will confirm the company's registration number, name, the type of entity, as well as the status of that specific entity. You will click on that uh, download option where you would now provide a mandate uh, to you being able to submit application form on behalf of the entity. You will click the continue button for it to refresh. Once again, it confirming the name and the registration number of the entity. And that total declared just confirms how much declaration of interest has already been confirmed at this stage will be sitting at zero. You'll click on the continue button where it will then require the information that you'll now be listing of the new official ownership information that you'll be adding. Once again, uh, the information that is being provided for the beneficial ownership as far as their identity is concerned must correspond with information at Department of Home Affairs. The information between CIPC and Home Affairs is synchronized. So any information that does not correspond with what is appearing, the Department of Home Affairs, the system will cite that. So you'll provide the date of birth. You'll also provide the last date of issue of your most recent ID document or ID card. With that being provided, you'll also provide 
ID number of the beneficial owner. You'll then be able to see that once the ID number is captured, the system will populate name and surname of the beneficial owner. It will require you to provide contact details as far as the email address of that beneficial owner is concerned, as well as the personal income tax number of that specific beneficial owner. It is also worth stating that you will provide the percentage of that specific beneficial owner and the type of beneficiary or type of interest they do have in this specific entity. So we put there 95%. And for the sake of this process, we'll just select shareholding, the type of interest the, entity, uh, the beneficial owner has in the specific entity. The further information asked there are for statistical purposes as far as the demographics, gender, disability, and country of residence and origin for the beneficial owner. We will require the postal and physical address of the beneficial owner. Should it be that the beneficial owner's postal address and physical address is the same, you will make use of that copy button between the two screens. Uh, should it be that it's different, we'll capture them separately as far as the uh, physical address and the field provided on the right for the postal address. Once that's completed, you will click save option where it will then capture the information that has been provided. At this point, it confirms the uh, loading of the information. You'll click on continue. Now, at this point, we're going to upload the supporting documentations that are required for the beneficial ownership process. It's always better to have these documentations already downloaded onto your device where you'll find it a bit easier to upload. The first one we'll be uploading will be the original mandate for applying for this specific beneficial ownership application. And by just clicking on the drop down menu, selecting the file and clicking save, it confirms the upload of that document. You click upload again for the second document. In this case, we'll be going for a certified copy of ID as required as one of the supporting documentations. You click on the drop down menu to select it, as well as clicking on the attach file option on the web page to select it from wherever it is saved on your device. We'll just click save. And the same goes for the following documentation. You go upload documents. Uh, click on the drop down menu and for this one we'll now be attaching one of the mandatory documents being a security certificate. As I've mentioned, it's always better to have all of these information or documentations downloaded up front onto your device just for ease of attaching. You click save. Now we're going to attach one of the last mandatory documentations by clicking upload document and at this point we're going to now attach beneficiary interest certificate you click save now once all the mandatory documentations that are required be uploaded which are also confirmed on the right of the page they are uploaded you just click continue option at this point, it will confirm that the application's uh, information has been captured, the attached of the documentations required has been captured, and then you click on submit. Now, at this point is where the system will be providing some verification steps. One being that uh, OTPs will be sent to the directors of the entity, both via email as well as via SMS. One other option that's quite nice with the process of receiving the OTP via email is that there is a link there that the director would be able to use to verify to see as to what information are they verifying with that OTP. Second option there also being that the director could choose to use the link to provide the OTP details themselves or rather to take the OTP information and send to the filer to be able to submit on their behalf. Just showing you now the use of the link that is sent to the director, which is this information is what the director will see after clicking the link. They would click confirm. It will confirm uh, the name as well as ID number, SMS OTP, and email OTP that will be required. Also keep in mind that OTP could also include an alphabet, and the system is case sensitive. 
So make certain that if the OTP appears in upper casing, it's also used the same as when capturing on the website. Uh, then you'll just confirm the ID number there. By clicking verify, it will then immediately confirm the information that is being provided between OTP via SMS as well as the OTP via email is correct. Just for us to demonstrate to you that should it be that the ID number is incorrect, the system will pick it up. It is verifying details from the back end information that we do keep of the entity. As we said, this is director verification. The director at that point has verified that information. Now for the applicant, they will just need to refresh the page, which will then confirm with that green tick that the director has verified that specific application. Another OTP is obviously sent to the applicant to verify that the details that they've provided to us, one, are correct, and secondly, to verify um, the correctness of the application being submitted. Once again, the ID number corresponding to the information appearing on the customer code, and they would have also received two OTPs, one via SMS, the other one via email. Also keeping in mind that the system is clever enough to verify that OTPs also don't get mixed up between the directors as, as well as that of the applicant. Once the OTPs have been verified, you'll see two green ticks that are appearing on the right there. You will just click finish to confirm and verify the submission of your application. Now, as I stated, it is worth noting that this is still the first phase of the specific beneficial ownership application process. There's still further development that will be coming on. Uh, and as I stated, the certificate will then be sent to the customer code holder as a confirmation of the application. However, you do also have the option of clicking on the download function that appears on that specific uh, page after submitting the application. Now, by just going on to your email, I just want to show you the confirmation coming in and verifying that the beneficial ownership application has been submitted. And then you are able to then open up a confirmation of beneficial ownership submission, confirming the company name, number, the entity information, as well as who is the beneficial owner that has been added to the entity. Once again, thank you for the time that you've given us to show you the demo. And we hope to see you very soon showing you now on the other services that will be added on to this beneficial ownership application process. Thank you. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as I indicated before, the, the demo playing was the fact that certain enhancements have been done already. I saw from, from the comment side, uh, in terms of the OTP, for example, let me speak to the changes uh, that has been brought in. The one-time PIN is only sent to the filer. So there is no link to the directors and it's not sent to the directors or members any longer as well. The OTP via SMS and email is sent to the filer. That is why the mandate to file on behalf of the entity is so very important. And that OTP, both SMS and email, so it's two OTPs that need to be submitted, will come from the filer that needs to have a valid customer code in order to, to log in in the first instance and make sure that the contact information is up to date with CIPC in terms of um, mobile and email address. Uh, further, the uh, upload of documents, there's a reference there to the beneficial interest certificate. This is not correct. This has been corrected. It is the beneficial interest register of an entity uh, that must be filed. Um, further enhancements that I'm going to mention as well that would waylay a lot of queries, I'm sure, is the upload of the securities register and the beneficial interest register. Currently, the system does not allow you to proceed when you have ticked um, that you're an affected company, for example. It still requires beneficial ownership information to be submitted, which is incorrect. 
we are um, already at the signing off stage in terms of the enhancements of the system. So very soon we will be able to correct that and an entity will be able to select affected company or a company, uh, non-affected company, but with no beneficial ownership information to declare. And then the system will only request you to upload the securities register and beneficial interest register as applicable. The mandate remains mandatory, a written mandate, as well as the certified ID copy for uh, validation and verification purposes once we start looking at the information that was submitted. Okay, I think, uh, Alma, at this point, we can um, open the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you, Lucinda. Our first question, a person asks, what happens if a shareholder is a um, BEE employee trust with hundreds of beneficiaries? In, the, in terms of, of trusts, as we've indicated initially, trusts information is filed with the master of the high court, not with the CIPC. If there is a company that has a trust as a beneficial owner, then that information must be declared in terms of a disclosure form that uh, there's no specific template on what this disclosure form looks like, what the CIPC requires is for this company, for example, to indicate this complex um, beneficial ownership structure on the disclosure form and upload that as part of the um, man, uh, as part of the documents that needs to be uploaded to the uh, submission as well. So once we start triangulating information. Um, with the master of the high court, with the FIC, with such, etc., then that information where the trust information was filed will then be triangulated to see how it slots in with the corporate vehicle information that was filed with the CIPC. Our next question, um, it says the message on the website in order to exit and disregard the application filing, select option cancel. I don't see the cancel option. Please help. Uh, what is, uh, you should just make use of the back uh, button to, if, if the, the cancel option doesn't work, I think the cancel is just at the beginning. What is going to happen is until you have submitted, click at the submit button, then it's only, uh, the application is only saved and it's pending and it's lying there on the system for verification or upload of documents or whatever the case may be. So um, only once the documents have been submitted, that is a valid submission and filing. What we are going to do as well is to start clearing the pending applications uh, from the system as well. The sa saved applications, which we will do um, possibly every 30 days, uh, clearing the, the cache of pending documentations or drafts where applications have been only submitted part way and not finalized uh, to enable the filers to, to re-lodge their applications. Uh, Lucinda, I just want to ask that you also again just speak about the 5% shareholding. There seems to be lots of questions around it. Um, people are struggling to understand that concept. Okay, so uh, I understand that the, the General Laws Amendment Act doesn't and the Companies Act doesn't refer to the 5% threshold. This was something that was decided upon as a country in terms of the uh, declaration requirements of beneficial ownership. Different jurisdictions has different requirements. The UK, for example, is as high as 25%. Um, this beneficial ownership declaration of 5% and above was decided upon as a country in line with the beneficial interest declaration, which is 5%, and that alignment was what was decided upon until such time that the country did decides different. That is the threshold that we are working with. Okay. 
Alma, are you there? Sorry, I'm muted. I, I don't know if this is what you just explained, but the question is for a non-affected company, we must have a beneficial owner's register if a threshold is, I suppose, 5%. Yes, so for all companies, it doesn't matter. The threshold remains 5%. If there is no beneficial ownership information to declare, there still remains a requirement of submission of the securities register of an entity which is mandated by the legislation and beneficial interest um, register in terms of affected companies that must also be submitted if applicable even if there's no beneficial ownership information to declare, the 5% threshold is applicable to uh, um, beneficial interest and beneficial ownership in terms of Section 56 Amendment. And uh, those registers still need to be filed even without any beneficial ownership information to declare. Just keep that in mind. Uh, this person also, you expect me to send the 100 copies of over 100 trust beneficiaries when a trust is a shareholder. That is not what we are saying. If a trust is your shareholder, then that trust information is going to be declared to CIPC. But the beneficiaries in terms of your trust, in terms of your trustees of that trust, etc., is declared with the master and not the CIPC. What we want is the beneficial ownership information of your corporate vehicle. So you have a company and you have a shareholder that is a trust and that trust information is going to be indicated on the disclosure form that you are going to submit and the beneficial ownership information in terms of that trust that's your trustees your beneficiaries etc is declared with the master on how their process is going to work i cannot advise at this point in time but we are only looking for the uh, corporate vehicle information uh, beneficial ownership declaration Thank you. This question, are all BO due for January to June due now and July to December to be submitted with an AR or are all the BO due now and new BO to be submitted when the July to December AR are submitted? Okay, so what the uh, regulation indicated is that entities incorporated um, before the 24th of May 2023. So this is our existing companies that were incorporated before the promulgation of the regulations need to submit their beneficial ownership information together with their annual return. So it's within 30 days from the anniversary date of incorporation. If your uh, annual return date, if your incorporation date has passed already, uh, before the 24th of May 2023, then you need to upload your beneficial ownership information now. Entities and then once annually, that is going to be updated. So entities incorporated after the 24th of May, the promulgation of the regulations will be required to file their beneficial ownership information within 10 days of incorporation. Thereafter, uh, once you have done your first submission, all corporate vehicles have done their first beneficial ownership submission, it will be updated annually. So if the beneficial ownership information doesn't change in that financial year, then it will only update, be updated annually once a year. If it changes within that financial year well before the um annual return date or the incorporation date anniversary, then it must be updated within 10 days from the date that it has changed. Okay, next question. Do you have an example of a mandate that needs to be submitted as we would like to ensure that we make use of the correct wording and ensure that the correct information is provided? 
Thank you, Jeffrey. Absolutely. Uh, we do not have a template of what the mandate needs to look like, but we have an idea of the type of information that we require. So at the end, we will make that available to the public as well. What needs to be contained in your mandate is a clear indication from the entity that is providing the mandate. So on a company letterhead, um, a special resolution at least on the company letterhead or ordinary resolution or a power of attorney even. And we require the ID number of the filer to, to be indicated in the mandate that the, the person specifically is filing in this instance we do not want a company to be mandated to file there must be a specific person the owner of the customer code that's going to file because they have to receive uh, the otps etc and this is a natural person that needs to be mandated to file and um, signed off by the directors of the company or if in the case of a resolution then by the shareholders Okay, does a sole member or director need to submit a BO? They are also the sole shareholder. That, that's the question that needs to be asked. If you are the sole director and sole shareholder of a company and there is no other person that has an interest in that company at all, for example, there is not a person mentioned in your memorandum of incorporation with the power to um, add or remove directors, then there's no beneficial ownership information to, declared, to be declared and this company will then only upload its securities register indicating the 100% shareholder in that securities register. Okay, will a calculator be provided to calculate the exact percentage ownership of BOs that are high up on the structure? Because, for example, 5% at level 10 up on the structure does not necessarily mean 5% ownership to the declaring company. Um, yes, at, we're not going to provide a calculator. That, that's the requirement of each company to calculate that in terms of the structure. But the calculation is applicable to each um, entity, for example. So um, you will not go through the whole complex structure to get to a total calculation with that because that will be more than 100% aggregate. It will be calculated in accordance with each entity on its own. What I can add as well, and as part of the developments that we are looking at right now, is that this we're going to provide for uh, many other beneficial ownership types, as indicated in my example in the presentation to be indicated as well. So not in every instance there is going to be a percentage applied beneficial ownership. We have control, for example, that was described where the person has the ability to add or remove directors. If I may use that example again, that percentage wise cannot be attached to that, but that is control, which is included in the beneficial ownership definition. And we will be developing a drop-down list where certain um, entities can select the type of beneficial ownership and then provide the information in that regard as well. Where can you find a securities register? The securities register needs to be drafted by each entity themselves. The um, Companies Act makes a provision for the information that must be contained in each company's securities register. How do you file BO? I suppose it's if the company is not linked to your ID. I don't understand if the uh, the ID that is submitted of the beneficial owner um, is the, the ID that is verified. I don't see how that is linked to the company. What we require then is the mandate to be in place for that person to file on behalf of the company. So um, the beneficial ownership owner is not going to, ID is not going to be linked to any company. 
and uh, that's the same as well if you uh, there's a cus- you have a registered customer code and you have filed for uh, other requirements in terms of the company's act for this entity on the demo it showed that when you log in with your customer code it will give you a drop down list of entities um, that is attached to that customer code if the entity that you are filing on behalf of is not on that drop down list it's just to make it easier for everyone is um, then you can use the search function and input the information of that specific entity in the search function and file it like that. The filer will not always have a BO's income tax number. I'm not sure if it's a question or comment. Uh, Unfortunately, what we require and what the Financial Action Task Force requires is that before a beneficial ownership filing is done, All the information required must be provided to the mandated filer and submitted. So um, each company must ensure when they provide the mandate that all the information is indicated that needs to be submitted. This one says, uh, good morning. Do we pay for getting all the documents required to register for beneficial ownership? Uh, The beneficial ownership filing is free. There's no fees attached. I I don't know how you uh, payment in terms of getting all the documents required to register beneficial ownership. Uh, What you mean by that, Salome, but uh, from the Companies Act perspective, this is a free of charge. There is no fee for filing beneficial ownership information. Okay, is the a private company, if there is a private company 100% owned by, I suppose it's a New York Stock Exchange company or any other foreign stock exchange, is this a non-affected company as it is not incorporated in terms of the South African Companies Act? If it falls within the parameters of a... Um affected company definition in terms of the legislation, then it will be an affected company. If it does not fall within those parameters, then it is a normal company, even with foreign stock exchange listed entities. But remember, from our perspective, you will look at the filing of the entities register on our records. So it will be South African companies as well as external companies registered on the CIPC records. Sorry, Lucinda, I'm just searching here through the questions because many have already been answered uh, by Benjamin. Um, So I'm just searching to see, um, I see yes, one that asked that we should explain fully um, the term affected company. I think it is quite um, extensively explained in in the presentation itself. So, Valma, just refer to that presentation as well. Um, It'll give you an indication of the affected company requirements. I can just add, um, Alma, while you are searching for any other questions that we need to tend to, I know and understand the frustration with regards to the Department of Home Affairs and the validation of IDs. This is unfortunately with uh, outside of the CIPC's control. Um, We are in daily contact with the Department of Home Affairs, which have explained to us that the problem come in with regards to verification of IDs the moment that uh, the, the system spikes, where we have high volumes of validations coming in, And this is usually between the hours of 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So if at all possible, I think what has been advised from our ICT division as well, if at all possible, try and do these filings, uh, any e-services filing where ID verification is required 
uh, before 10 in the morning or, or later in the afternoons where there isn't such high volumes of applications going through. Okay, this person says, Vice Eva Trust holds 10% shareholding in a company and the trust have five beneficiaries. How do you divide the 10% shareholding that the trust holds in the company? Uh, remember, as indicated, the 10% shareholding of the trust is the, the trust is the beneficial owner. And then we looked at the... Um, beneficiaries and the trustees uh, in terms of, of that trust specifically. So there's no need for breakdown of who owns what. Um, as, what as soon as you do the declaration above 10%, then the breakdown falls. All of the beneficial owners in terms of that trust is then declared. You look at the trust itself and then down to the warm bodies. Okay, the next one, can a minor be added as a beneficial owner? Uh, minors, uh, the, the Companies Act doesn't provide anything in terms of minors. Um, the minors can, for example, not be a director, etc. I know that uh, shares can be held on behalf of a minor and that information will be indicated in the beneficial interest register of entities which needs to be uploaded in any event. So that information will reach the CIPC as well. Okay, please advise how penalties and fines will be calculated. Remember the penalties and or the fines that was mentioned in terms of the enforcement of non-compliance is uh, legislative. So it fo follows the same route as um, any other compliance notice that is issued by the CIPC for whatever non-compliance uh, or contravention. And if that is not corrected, entities will be provided a chance to correct that, that non-compliance. Uh, if that is not done, then the CIPC can proceed with uh, approaching an appropriate court that can lead to uh, administrative fines, and that is decided by the court itself. There's no specific amount attached to that. I'm again just searching for another question here that haven't been answered. Um, so if you can just give me a few seconds. Somebody was also asking about international mobile numbers. I suppose it is if directors are overseas, do we make use of those? Do we send OTPs overseas, Lucinda? Uh, that, that's the thing. We have now changed that uh, because of the issue with the directors that find themselves overseas and foreign directors even. So the um, OTP is only going to the filer at this point, which is uh, have to have a customer code and therefore already validated by the system. Okay. If a company is held by another entity who would be the beneficial owner, we do not have any humans who own shares as we only have entities who are shareholders. Do, who do we nominate as the BO? Uh, this does not make sense to me. Um, how can you have only an entity that is a shareholder? In terms of that shareholding, there must be a warm body at the end of the line that receive dividends that have to make the decisions uh, of that specific entity, etc. So when you go down to the complex structure, there is a warm body at the end of the line that benefits um, from the, this shareholding. And that is the information that must be declared. This one is saying where a company is part of a larger group with numerous companies in the organogram leading up to a listed entity, do you list the actual shareholder as a beneficial owner for each or the listed entity? Okay, so where you have a, first you need to find out if there is, uh, if this is a, a normal company 
or whether it's an affected company. If it's an affected company, uh, in terms of the definition already provided, then that box is ticked and you only need to upload the securities register or beneficial interest register. That information later on is then going to be triangulated and validated uh, with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and entities such as Trade, Computer Share, uh, Stockbrokers Association, etc., to validate whether the information that we uh, have received in terms of the BO filing is in line with what they hold on their records. If it is a, a non affected company, so a normal company with beneficial ownership information, and there is a complex structure, then that needs to be, you indicate the first shareholding, the first entity or entities above the 5%, and then upload the disclosure form that depicts the organogram of the complex structure as well. That information will then later on be uh, verified against the various entities already mentioned. Uh, Lucinda, I know you've answered certain things on the 5%. I'm in case going to ask this question in case it's slightly different from the others. Otherwise, perhaps you can just answer again on the 5% because I know it's, it's the same. So yeah, it's questions. the same question. Is it the same one? Mm. Okay, so you want to skip that one. Um, as I said today, we answered quite a number in writing. I'm just searching the site, so okay. Here's a question in terms of a home owners association is it only the directors that need to be listed on the BO, or does everyone in the complex have to be detailed? In terms of a home owners association, you will have a um, members register uh, because there won't be a securities register but a members register and again you have to ask yourself the question as a company who benefits from this uh, company who ultimately benefits if there is all those um, members of the company then but there is no beneficial interest because they don't, uh, or beneficial ownership, they don't benefit from this uh, company. It's just control. Then you have your directors that are the beneficial owners because they control this NPC. And then you submit the members register that is required where you read a securities register. You also need to read members register. Okay, Lucinda, I think we have more or less answered everybody because many were answered also in writing. What I would like to request is if anybody um, was skipped by accident, please log an inquiry on our website. There is one uh, specifically for BO. Um, I think it's for the, Lucinda, just help me, is it for under corporate legal? Yes. So, yes, if, if there's any queries in terms of beneficial ownership and the legislative requirements and the register, please file a query uh, under the inquiries, on the inquiries a platform on the CIPC website, select corporate legal and you will find beneficial ownership below that. Um, I want to ask everybody to please do not submit specific uh, scenario queries of uh say we have this many shareholders and this beneficial owners etc cetera, etc cetera. we cannot provide you with legal advice it is responsibility of each company to um, ascertain that information themselves if they need legal assistance then unfortunately you have to obtain legal assistance uh, the cipc cannot answer those queries for you we can guide in terms of the legislative requirements and how the register works and uh, requirements that you need to submit, what does the documents need to look like, etc. But uh, we cannot respond to specific scenario questions. 
Um, if there is something complex that uh, you want to discuss with me, for example, uh, you are welcome to send me an email directly. I don't have a problem with that. It's alsteenkamp at cipc.co.za um, and we can discuss specific beneficial ownership information if there's really something that you need clarity on or that you did not receive a, a satisfactory answer in terms of the inquiry system. Thank you. Okay, I see one of my colleagues did put up this question. Where shareholder is a nominee? What must appear in the beneficial interest register? Again, the Companies Act provides clear guidance on the content of the beneficial interest register as well as the securities register. Okay, thank you, Lucinda. I think we've come to the end of our webinar. I just want to remind everybody, I know many are third parties who are assisting customers. You're welcome to inform uh, customers, especially of SMMEs, about our director e-learning course that is available on the CIPC website. It's free of charge. If they need information how to enroll, they can write to us at e-learning uh, yeah, e at cipc.co.za. We will send them information. And I want to say thank you very much for each and everyone who joined us today. I hope the webinar has been of assistance to you and that we'll see you at more of our webinars. Thank you, everyone, and especially for Lucinda for her presentation. Have a good day. Bye-bye.